Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to this open day from the University of Dundee. This is the Duncan of Jordanston College of Art and Design session. My name is Frances Stevenson, and I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Art and Design. So a huge welcome to you. We hope we're, you're going to enjoy the, this evening and find the talks um, informative. We'll be starting off with a quick introduction about the college. And then we are going to take you through um, four students who are currently studying with us. We have Kirsty Bruce, who will be uh, talking about her experience in textile design. We that will be followed by Lucas Ferguson, who is going into third year digital interaction design. That will be followed by Lauren Marie Kennedy, who was a direct entry student in level two and is going into third year fine art and then finally we have Callum Valentine who is a general foundation course student who is just about to go into second year graphic design so we hope you enjoy the session and um, what I would like you to think about is while we are speaking um, you can um, add some comments to the chat box at the side because we'd like to hear what you're thinking, any questions that you have, so that we can all input and answer anything you'd like to ask us. OK, so let's go. We'll just go to the first slide that I have here, which is um, the one after that. Thank you, Leah. Um, Dundee, a creative city. There's a beautiful picture here of the city of Dundee. You can see the Tay Road Bridge um, looking and, and going into the city of Dundee. And I have to say that picture has not been adjusted. The lighting in the city itself is absolutely beautiful. Um, but our city is a creative city. We are a UNESCO city of design. Um, we're very proud of that fact. We're the only one in the UK. Um, and we stand beside cities such as Beijing, uh, Seoul, Helsinki. So for a very small city to have that attached to us, we're very proud of it. We also have very eminent alumni coming out of our programmes and we're very happy that um, a lot of our tutors are actually practising artists and designers. We, we very much want the students to experience being taught by people who work and work um, proactively within their artistic and creative practices. We're also home to the V&A Dundee, Scotland's Design Museum. Um, and at the minute, you, if you uh, come here in the, any time in the future, you may miss the current exhibition, Night Fever. We have lots of opportunities to work with the v &A Museum. The, we do student projects with them. We have research taking part with them. But it's a huge asset to the college and the city. Next slide, please, Le Leanne. Our reputation, uh, we are very happy to be number one in Scotland for art and design, and that's from the Complete University Guide. Um, we are one of the top 10 UK universities for art and design. We are one of the UK's top 20 universities, and that's in the Guardian University Guide. And we are very proud to have received the Teaching Excellence Framework Award for teaching and that is very important to us. We pride ourselves in the quality of our teaching within the college. Next slide, please. So I'll just quickly take you through some of our undergraduate um, courses. We have an Art and Design General Foundation programme. This, pro this programme is it's one of the only ones in Scotland. Um, and there are very few left in the UK. This is an opportunity for students to come and to experience many of the different um, programmes and areas that they could specialise in, and they can make a decision on that programme into which area they would like to progress within, within the art school. The areas that we have are contemporary art practice, we have art and philosophy, and we have fine art, um, you can see students working in their studios here. All these are images that have been taken from the college itself. So they are all part of our estate and the working areas within the school. We have communication design. 
Within this grouping, we have animation, illustration and graphic design. And again, you can see the students working um, in studio spaces within these programmes. We have design and making, uh, and within this grouping, there is jewellery and metal design. We have textile design. We have digital interaction design, interior and environmental design, and we have product design. If you'd like to apply for digital interaction design, interior and environmental design and product design, they have their own first year. So you would be looking to come into those programmes through the first year entry point in these, these areas. We also have opportunities for students to progress to masters. So our undergraduate degrees are four years. Um, you have the opportunity to pro progress onto our master's programmes. At the minute, we have a choice of 10 master's programmes. We have them listed here. The school is expanding this area, currently expanding this, and um, we will be looking to enhance what we offer in this area in the next three to five years. In terms of our workshops and facilities, our philosophy is very much thinking through making. Um, we believe that workshops and facilities are, are key to student learning within the school and we invest a lot of the state um, to equipment and facilities for students to work in a hands-on way within the, the workshops. There are a whole range of workshops from the very sort of high-tech digital making space through to the foundry, ceramics workshops, printmaking workshops, textile printing workshops, um, animation green rooms, etc., photography. The workshops, I think, are really one of our flagships and we're really proud of the facilities that we offer students. And indeed, I think a lot of the feedback that we get from our students is that the, the workshop spaces are excellent. So um, that will continue to strengthen um, in the coming years because it is part of the philosophy of the school. We do help students uh, pull together their online portfolios and uh, we have an exhibition um, and a, gu a guide and you can see that through the booth on the VFairs platform. Um, but through this presentation today, please, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask about pulling together your portfolio, anything you're unsure about, we have experts here, we've got staff, We've got people who work with students putting together portfolios for the first time and we'd be happy to help and support you um, and, and we'll give you a further contact should you require it. That's all that I have to say and I'm going to hand you over to Kirsty Bruce who is a student about to go into level four textile design and she has her presentation. Thank you very much everyone. Hello everyone, I'm Kirsty Bruce and I'm one of Francis's students heading into fourth year of textile design. I came through the General Foundation course in 2018 with no real idea where I wanted to go. So I feel like that experimental year was really beneficial and helping me find my feet really and kind of decide where I want to go. But um, Callum will speak more about that later on. So to start off, I think one of the best things about DJCAD is a sense of community here. And since we're on a relatively small campus, it's so easy to make connections. So I really urge you to throw yourself into as much as that as you can. Whether that's like cross-disciplinary projects, joining in in clubs or sports, or even just night outs, to be honest, it's really good to just get out there. Only good things can come from it. Building on this um, comes the community in the studio spaces. It's great to have your own dedicated space and not have to hot desks so you can really make your area suit you. And I really can't wait to return this semester so we can continue with that. 
Move on to the next slide, please. As well as your own space, there's so many great shared spaces in DJ CAD from the cantina, the library, the make space and the media labs. But in textile specifically, we have fantastic facilities and workshops run by our technicians, Judy and Rebecca, who go to amazing lengths to help inspire you really. On the left here, we have, sorry, go back a slide. On the left here, we have the printing studio where I'm fine most of the time. And on the right, we have the yarn store for knit which is a room of absolute colour dreams. In textiles, you will learn the methods and processes in both print and knit. And towards the end of your level two year, you'll choose which area you want to specialise in and focus on. Although, although if you've chosen one, you don't have to restrict yourself and stay in one. It's really good to experiment as much as you can, whether it's fusing the two together, knit and print, like dyeing your own yarns or printing on top of knit samples, for example, it's, I feel like that was an important part of my learning process to keep experimenting with materials, which I'll speak about later on. But again, yeah, make use of the wider DJ CAD facilities as much as you can, like laser cutters, spray booths, and the wooden metal workshops. Next slide, please. As well as our specialism specific workshops in design and craft, along with the jewellery department, who we often collaborate with on projects, we also benefited from workshops built into our timetable that were on life drawing and Photoshop. I thought these were really good to just kind of also build up your skills, but it was good to have time out of your, out of my textile design work. And when you returned to it, you had such fresh eyes, even though you were doing something different. It was great to have that built in. Next slide, please. As I head into my fourth year, I've been reflecting back on some of my favourite projects, so I thought I'd just show you this one. These are some elephant elements taken from my sketchbook from our culture and identity project, where we were challenged to delve into what we were inspired by and why. This project led me to explore my heritage rooted in rural art agriculture. And although my final outcomes didn't turn out to be some of my favourite work, quite honestly, that's all right. I learned so much with this project and created successful experiments on the way that it almost outweighed the final outcome not being so great. This was a big part in learning for me that I shouldn't be so focused on a final outcome because I'll lose what was so great in the process. And I feel like that was a mentality that was so deeply ingrained from me from school that was like ticking boxes to get to this final piece. But it was great to break out of that in textiles because they really tried to get you to experiment as much as you can and break out of your comfort zone, which I just, yeah, feel like was so beneficial for me. Next slide, please. The project following on from this last project was due to be a collaborative embroidery project, which I was so excited to, to start. But this was scheduled for March 2020, so I can, I'm sure you can guess what happened next. <laughs> Suddenly we're all back at home with our with little to none of our art supplies and that everything had been abandoned in the studio. The collaborative project then became a solo outcome and we were then allowed to choose our own project theme. Since I wasn't happy with my outcomes from the previous project, I decided to return to see if I could create something I was a bit more happy with. I decided to really push myself with this project and decided that in line with my rural theme, I would only use recycled materials. This sent me scavenging on my daily walks to collect materials and I soon began to see, see objects in a different way. Plastic bags became thread to stitch with, ring pulls became chains and even old rusty nails became embellishments for this final piece that you see in front of you. This is a farmland inspired mixed media piece. Overall, I was proud of what I produced and loved how what seemed to be a restriction at the start on the project actually gave me so much more ideas to experiment with. And I feel like that's something I'll carry through to my fourth year. In the end, I now only see challenges as opportunities. Although part of me, I, part of me still wonders what the collaborative project would have been like, to be honest. So as I go ahead, I'm hoping that in fourth year, I can bring some of that co-design into my work. So I'm hoping to work with people and keep this use of reusing materials to create a final outcome there. And that's me just now.
Hi everyone, my name is Lucas Ferguson. Um, I study digital interaction design and I'll be going into third year as of next semester. Um, just the next slide then. So I thought I'd start by just telling you a bit about me. So um, before uni, I went to Edinburgh College and I studied graphic design. So I wasn't a direct entrant from high school. I kind of tried to get a bit more experience before I came to uni. Um, I'm really keen into user experience design, graphic design. And I've got a really good photography hobby, which I'm trying to keep up at the moment. So yeah, that's a bit about me. So I thought that the best way to show you all what uni was like was to actually show you one of my projects that I went through. Um, so this was a project that I did in the second year, so the last year that I just finished up. Um, and this was a brief that when I first read, I just hated it and I didn't like the idea of it. But I actually thought that was one of the best ones to show you because I actually found myself a bit more in this project and I enjoyed it in the end. So the brief that we were given was to design a product or interface to keep people connected throughout a lockdown. However, the lockdown was in the year 2000, so we weren't allowed to use any technology or anything that was invented after 2000. So a lot of research based in this. Um, just on the next slide. So to start, I did a lot of idea generation and doing interaction design. A lot of it is prototyping and hands on, so I kind of got straight to model making and um, using coding and things like that, sketching out a bit of everything that I've learned, to be honest. Um, and I decided to base my project on the idea of connecting with your neighbours through a lockdown, as um, I was trying to think about what I did through the lockdown this year. And definitely for me, one of the people was talking to my neighbours that I'd never really spoke to before. And um, so I wanted to create a product that showed this connection without fancy technology that everyone needs, that everyone has nowadays. I'm just the next slide. So developing my idea further, um, I just created this kind of like a lamp, as you can imagine, as you can see here. Um, and the whole basis of it is it's all through different colours and different colours of different emotions or meanings. The idea being all the neighbours in the street would have this in a, um, in their windows in the street and different colours would allow you to connect with your neighbours without having to face to face or physical conversations. There'd be no need for text. Um, and it's an interaction that I thought was quite just simple but effective. Um, so yeah, this was some of the prototyping I did. As we were in lockdown, I didn't really have access to facilities. Um, so I had to do a lot of the prototyping out of card, board and things that I had just lying around my room. Um, I bought an LED light um, that changed colours off Amazon and I used that, which was which was interesting. So yeah, this was some of the, just the prototyping of my product as I went through. Um, and the next slide. That's all right. So this was the final outcome for my project. So I called it Communicare and then um, I actually did a lot of user research in this project as well. So I, I got people to actually use it and see how it would connect. And I thought that in the end that even though I really didn't like the, the brief for the start of the project, the, the final outcome hit the brief and I actually really enjoyed it. And I felt like I learned quite a lot and got to reflect on COVID as well and use design, which is something I obviously enjoy to make COVID more positive maybe. It distracted me from the lockdown, I guess. Um, just the next slide. So because I've just shown you what I've done in COVID, I thought it was quite important to show you what the studio spaces and stuff were like. So I was in first year, I got in when COVID kind of hit at the end of my first year, but um, this is the studio space and the kind of environment that we had in first year, we were with product and environmental design. So graphic design kind of work, uh, product design, you can see the benches in the top right corner that we got to design and it was really um, like kind of a sense of teamwork and all that and everything that we did. Everyone got to have a chat and you bounced off each other design and like the atmosphere in the studio I think is so important. Um, and the bottom right picture is actually the second year studios that I got in a little bit last year. But um, yeah, I just thought that'd be helpful for you to see and how great the studio space is that we get given. Um, I also thought it was maybe important to show you that as a student at uni, it's not all about what you do um, for classes. I do a lot of stuff outside of uni, but I think that the skills that I've been set up for me have helped me. So I do a lot of logo and graphic design work. Um, and this just kind of, I think, it's really important to put yourself out there as well while you're at uni, get your contacts. Um, even from first year, you know, like, don't be afraid to, to just get going as well. Um, just the next slide as well. Uh, this is just the last slide. I thought it was really nice to show you the view from the studios that we have. Um, 
because it's just so nice. Like, see if you're working on a sunny day and everyone's there, and um, this is just what it's like. Nice to look out while you're working. And um, so that's me. I think I'll pass you to Lauren now, and um, who'll speak from now. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Murray and I've just completed second year fine art at Duncan of Jordanson. I'd like to talk to you today about a project that I initially was really intimidated by, but it turned out to be the one that I think I've gotten the most out of in the past year. So if you're anything like me, you might get struck with fear when you think about the dreaded self-led project. And the idea of creating a brief from scratch and working towards your own deadlines can definitely be quite daunting, but I'm here to tell you that they are not as scary as they seem and I'll show you how to fully embrace them. Um, next slide, please. So because these projects are ultimately all about personal inquiry, it is, of course, important to be true to you. For me, that meant focusing on something I'm genuinely interested in, which is veganism and animal rights. It's been through my own research into these topics that I've discovered so much about myself and the kind of art that I enjoy making, which has ranged from purely conceptual pieces to installations, performances, and I've experimented with film, photography and sound, which has been a lot of fun. Next slide, please. These projects take up a lot of studio time and you'll likely produce several completed works rather than just one finished piece. And before long, you'll become best friends with the facilities. The great thing is you're not limited to painting, for example, if you consider yourself to be a painter right now. You're encouraged to try any and every facility that you like. Here's an image of the workstation I set up in the textiles printing room. And if we go to the next slide, this is what I created from that. So this was a series that showed confessions from abattoir workers on gloves that mimic PPE, just trying to show the impact of consuming animals and how that affects other humans too, which is something I don't think many of us realise. Um, the next slide, thank you. I also wanted to try laser cutting, but I'm not the most technical person. So luckily there are knowledgeable workshop technicians that you can seek advice and help from. One of them kindly made me a step-by-step -step video of this process, which I was very grateful for. And on the next slide, this is the installation that I made with those pieces. So um, this was about grouse shooting and how it was given an exemption to the rule of six during lockdown, which is what the six birds there represent. And the target on the floor is made up of real heather buds, which is just an odd to the environmental impact that this so-called sport has on the heather moors, which are normally burned and they just release huge amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere. So all in all, not great for our planet or the animals. And um, the next slide you'll see, I did work with clay, but I never used it as a final piece. And that's totally fine because um, even if you don't use something, it's still great development for your sketchbook and you'll become more comfortable using these mediums in future if you ever want to um, revisit them. The next slide, when we did have to eventually work from home again, the skills I'd learned in the, uh, the workshops came in really handy and helped me create more pieces like these tin sculptures. Um, the next slide. Um, yeah, so they were inspired by Sea Spiracy, which is a Netflix documentary you might have heard of that just exposes the, uh, the fishing industry. And on the next slide, I also researched the egg industry and started to incorporate elements of activism into my work for the first time. Didn't go down too well, as you can see here, the, this piece was removed from a supermarket. <laughs> the next slide, please. Thank you. And of course, I've investigated the meat and dairy industries pretty intensively. And it's worth mentioning that there are group crits every now and then too, which gives you the opportunity to discuss ideas and get valuable feedback from your mentors and fellow students. So although it is self-driven uh, during these projects, you can talk things out with others, which made me feel less alone, really. Um, the next slide. 
So you might be wondering, well, you know, how open are the briefs? And honestly, the answer is they're as open as you make them. Every brief is open to your own interpretation. For instance, some of my classmates used their self-led project to explore poetry and text. Um, others focused on LGBT issues, mental health, neurodiversity, um, photography and the environment, to name just a few. And although I was scared in the beginning of the dreaded self-led project, I hope you can see that they are super beneficial to your own personal growth and development as an artist. As you can see here, um, just last month, I had some of my work from this project shown in a gallery in Glasgow, which was really exciting. And I was, well, I just wanted to say that if you do plan to study here, it will definitely help prepare you for the future. Thanks to the incredible lecturers and other students that you learn with and from along the way, you become part of a real community here at Dundee. Um, it's one that welcomes, supports and encourages you no matter what stage you're at in your creative journey too. And if we just go to the next slide, the final one, um, just leaves me to thank you all so much for listening and I'll hand you over to our next speaker, Callum. Hello everyone, my name is Callum Valentine. Upon gen joining the General Foundation course at DJ CAD last year, I felt that as an artist I was adequate, scrupulous, but excited. And today I'm going to talk to you about the module that transformed me artistically. It was called Make the Body. So we began this project with the brief, um, which consisted of discussion of various different artists and movements, but it was mainly just gentle direction to try and encourage people to explore what the human body is. Now I decided that I was going to take my own uh, direction, which is encouraged, and I inverted the question and I took it in a direction that it became, instead of make what makes the body, the question was um, what is made for the body? And uh, I landed on architecture as it is the foremost example of something that is made for the body. Next slide, please. So as this idea developed, um, I began researching various different architects. The two most notable architects I researched were Joanny Palasma and Le Corbusier. Um, and I read their two books, two most well-known books respectively, um, The Eyes of the Skin and Towards an Architecture. These two architects have very different approaches to architecture and opinions on what makes good and effective architecture, but they share a disdain for the way in which we approach architecture nowadays uh, with our visual bias. Um, and they both encourage um, people to engage more senses so instead of just focusing on vision, involve your audio capacity, tactility, things like this. Um, so that, that, that this became, particularly Dyes of the Skin by Johnny Plasma, that book became the Bible to this project as I approached really what the architecture is and how it works for the body. Next slide, please. So here are some outcomes from that research. So my first piece is a knife handle, which was a result of an exploration of broken relationship between man and architecture and uh, the living space that is supposed to work for the man. Um, next slide, please. And then we have a second one, which is called light trap, which is a light switch attached to a mouse trap. Now, the idea with these pieces is that if you were to use them, you would inflict pain on yourself. Um, obviously not something we want to do. Um, so these reflect an idea that not all architecture works in the way that it's supposed to. Next slide, please. And the third piece I have here is uh, called Test Tube Babies. It's quite uh, self-explanatory. It was inspired by Johnny Plasma's comment that the first architecture that we experience is in the womb, um, or for some people, it's laboratory. So this is a satirical take on IVF. Next slide, please. I also got to experience in this project, not just with uh, different lines of inquiry and expanding my 
uh, knowledge of discipline, different disciplines aside from fine art and graphics. And but I also got to experiment with material I've never used before, such as plaster of Paris um, and other sculptural materials, which I use later on in some of these other photos. Um, again, this this glove is is uh, continuing the theme of inversion and uh, the idea that we are as much what we are not as what we are. So in, in most thought processes, the, the, the glove is the result of the hand, but in this working method, the hand is actually the result of the glove. Next slide, please. So this, we have two pieces here. This is the first one. This is called the receiving ears. And then the next piece is called the reaching eyes. Again, inspired by Gianni Palazma's comments on ocular centrism and how in our, in our experience in architecture and in life, the ears are receiving in quite a comfortable sense. Uh, so I've got a man sat, sat there with open arms and whereas the eyes are quite accusatory and quite judging. Um, and so this was to display, this was to try and convey an idea that the ears, there is something more to be found by using our ears. If you think about the grandest forms of architecture, such as churches, the sound of a church is what makes the place feel grand as much as its visual aesthetic. Um, and then a couple of slides later, um, this is the next one after this thing. Um, this is the final piece I created, which was called, which is just an untitled installation I created which again was was uh, inspired by my experience with architecture, particularly my childhood experience with architecture. Um, you might not be able to see, it might not be clear enough, but I'm seated here with lots of blank fuse plates behind me, which was something I remembered back to maybe being three or four years old. Um, I remember seeing these and thinking that they looked like light switches, but someone had decided that they were going to install a light and then stop anyone from using it. So it made me feel a little bit confused as to whether I was in a place I was supposed to be, and whether the architecture was in fact built for me. So there's a theme of disorientation there. The piece is also a reflection of interrogation rooms and methods used by police and law enforcement um, to, dis to disorientate and confuse suspects. Next slide, please. Um, so as I reflect on this module, and I feel like I've spoken at a million miles an hour here, um, I took a lot of time to sit and think about what I gained from this project. I feel really passionately about um, the work I created and the discussions I had during this time, namely with uh, a couple of lecturers. Um, I spoke to Kim McGillivray, my lead lecturer during this project, and had some really fantastic conversations that really stick with me to this day. Um, and also another lecturer who wasn't my lead lecturer, but was my advisor for the year, Ian Sturrock. Um, my experience with these two lecturers just summed up my uh, my feelings on the support network within DJ CAD. Um, and also beyond lecturers, I was supported by Alan, the technician in the General Foundation Department. Um, get if you if you're going to join General Foundation, make sure you get Alan on site really quickly, as he will do all he can to give you a platform to make great artwork. There were multiple resources and materials I got from Alan for free. Um, which other people were having to go out to Hobbycraft or whatever and pay for. Um, I also felt like the library is a fantastic resource which isn't talked about enough. So support from the library staff and their vast collection of books was fantastic. Um, so sum up, I've been Callum Valentine. Uh, I now feel I am an artist. I no longer feel like I'm just adequate. I feel I am an unorthodox, but I remained excited about what's to come. So if you have any questions about General Foundation, um, just email the email that's on the screen right now and just mention my name. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you very much to um, all our students who were presenting there. We had Kirsty Bruce, Lucas Ferguson, Lauren Marie Kennedy and Callum Valentine. Um, well done, everybody. That was really good insight into what you've been um, doing uh, on your programmes. And, and more than that, you actually gave us some brilliant information about uh, the challenges that you've 
um, enjoyed actually and um, how the workshops run, um, the, the staffing, how you engage with tutors. Um, so much there that um, will be really helpful, I think, for people, you know, wondering what it's like to study at Duncan of Jordanston College. Um, we do have a few minutes and I see that Christine has been um, answering questions. Thank you, Christine, for um, taking hold of the, the questions section and uh, keeping up with any questions coming in. But I just wondered if um, the students wanted to put their cameras back on. I don't know whether you want to just come back on for a quick chat for five minutes in case anybody's got any more questions they'd like to um, fire at us because you've got the the people here where it's coming straight from the horse's mouth if you like and um, the students have been through different programs within the school a uh, callum went through first year i think kirsty went through first year too first year general course and uh, lucas you went through the first year program within product so somebody asked a question about um, how many students do they take in product design basically it works that um, students go on to a first year course which they will either choose product design digital interaction design or interior design so there is a big group of students that work together in that first year um, and then you make a make a choice from that i don't know whether you want to add anything to that lucas yeah, so when you come in, you've actually already chosen your degree, but you all work together as um, like one big year group. But um, it's really good because everyone's kind of got their own different inputs. So the interaction people maybe have different um, thought process to the interior and the product. And like before, I guess I went into the first year, I was quite set on interaction design, but then I'm using skills that the product designers kind of showed me. And then in the lectures, you know, you did a bit of everything. Um, but I think it's really good actually having a mixed first year, you know, like some people might be like, oh, I just want to go straight to the course that I've chosen. But I just wouldn't recommend like, like make sure you get in between all the courses. And then, yeah, it just kind of gives you different insights into the way things are. So that's really important, I think. And I was, um, I loved Callum's reference to the fact that um, with a bit of sweet talking to certain people, you were getting free materials, Callum. Is that... Um... <laughs> Yeah, so um, it was uh, my main memory was I was I, I I was wanting to get started with sculptural work, um, and I wanted to I, could, I had no idea where to buy like a plinth, and I spoke to Alan, and he said that he'd create the plinth for me. Now there is a studio fee involved in first year, so technically this stuff is not free, but I know that there were been people going out and spending lots of time and money creating these things where if you actually create the right relationships and keep them if you stay in the good books um, people will help you so. excellent i think one of the um lovely things that came through all the presentations there was um the fact that you are challenged to really think outside the box and think about how you drive your own um idea through a project whether that's a brief that's been set or whether you are writing your own um, brief from scratch, which I think Lauren, Marie, you were um, talking about that, you know, you were talking about how you had to self-direct the brief, but I think maybe in some of the other programmes you have a brief, but you are allowed to explore different things within it. Is that a kind of fair um, sort of summing up of how it works within all the programmes, even although if you've, you're set a brief, you are expected to really kind of push the limits of your exploration within that brief. Kirsty, I'll come in here. <laughs> yes, yeah. Lauren Marie from Fine Art, maybe. Yeah, um, I mean, we had other briefs too that meant that you were working with other students, so that was quite good. Um, challenging from home, but it was it was good. And there are ones that are themed sometimes as well. And you may you might have a summer project uh, that some of the students might be working on too. Um, but yeah, you're always encouraged to really just hone in on your skills and and find out what it is that makes you tick. I was just very fortunate to get there this past year. 
how about you, Kirsty? Is it is it the same in textiles or how yeah, the briefs are set? I and... think that's the thing. Yeah, your your briefs are set for you, but you can completely take them in a different direction. As like Lucas said, when he was given a brief for a start, and he thought that that was just not going to suit him at all. You can completely take it your own way. You can completely turn it on its head, um, and I think that's a great part of it. Part of it is just thinking differently and thinking, well, if I don't think I'm going to like it this way, then what about I try this? And often you think you might be being a bit cheeky when you've completely flipped on its head and you take it to your tutor and say, well, I've actually taken it this way. You think they're going to say no, back to the drawing board. But sometimes, yeah, you're encouraged by that and they're like, go ahead, let's see what you come out with. So I think that's, yeah, really exciting to see how everybody goes in their different directions and comes together at the end with completely obscure things. <laughs> that's great. And I know we've been in lockdown and um, we've we've come out the other side of that and all the students are back on campus for, for September and I'm sure everybody's looking forward to that and um, being back, back in your studios, uh, workshops opened up etc. We didn't lock down completely, we did have the top postgraduate students in and we did have our final year students in but um, I'm just wondering if any of you have got any experiences of or have um, been working. We were talking about using workshops across, um, you know, different subjects. So Lauren Marie, you were in the textile studio printing, you were in ceramics. Um, what about working with other students across disciplines? Have any of you had any experience of perhaps working with in an interdisciplinary way across other fields? So working with somebody from another discipline? In um, yeah, our third year, that um, other module, sorry Francis, what's the, what's it called? That extra... Expansive learning module? Yeah, expansive learning module, yeah. In our, the one we picked, um, we had people from all across our year. We had um, jewellery design, we had product design, we had us in textile design, graphics. I thought that that module was a really good one to bring loads of different people together and like use their skills and in a way that like we did in, in General Foundation, just getting to know what everybody does and what works. So it was great in a way in textiles, like well me specifically, I'm horrendous with technology, but when we had, when we were doing that project, we could just delegate the tasks and say, right, you're amazing at this, you go ahead and do that and I'll do this. And I think that was a great way to kind of, yeah, explore in different ways. And some people came out of that and thought, God, I'm going to go and try jewellery after this. I'm going to try a bit more graphics, which was a great bit, a great way as well to explore when you're still in, when you're in your third year, but you're still getting ideas for fourth year. They're yeah. just feed in from other disciplines, which is great. And I'm going to touch on a, a, a bit of a, a tricky subject here because someone has put in a message saying, how much is the studio fee? And I'm thinking back to Callum getting his three materials. Um, we do have a studio fee um, and the studio fee does um, cost, I think it's £100 a year at the minute, is that correct? I've got that right. Uh, but the studio fee, because we were out on um, COVID and nobody was in the building, I believe that we were reimbursed. Yeah, I was reimbursed, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I got reimbursed for that, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So the studio fee is £100 a year and uh, I see Leanne sort of posted that back up again. It's, it is a, an ongoing um, discussion that we have within the, the college, uh, but we do think that um, across all the facilities and the workshops and the materials and everything that's avail available for free, so for example the clay and the glazes, printmaking workshop, uh, we do feel as though it is uh, justified in a sense because it's actually very heavily subsidised by the school. So um, that's to answer. Just to add to that, I think in um, my first year we got like loads of materials provided for us for free, you know, for yeah. the product design and the um, environmental, like all the paper, pens, a lot of cardboards and like scraps of everything was like we didn't pay for a lot of the stuff. So 
I think when you pay it, it feels like a bit of a like a bit of a blow sometimes at the time because obviously we're students, money's tight, but um, like it is worth it. And it lasts the whole year, so yeah. yeah. And there's also like, oh, yeah. non physical resources like um, having a Creative Cloud membership, massive. Yeah. You know, exactly, people forget yeah. that just, that comes as standard yeah. being on the course. Right. All the digital technologies included in it too. Exactly, all the, the Mac labs and everything there as well. Yeah. Somebody once explained it to me, uh, like, because we were speaking about it, I think in first year saying, I'm not using like a hundred pounds worth of materials. And then somebody sat down and said, you're getting this and you're getting this. And then we spoke about how maybe in first year or second year, you're not using as much materials as you think you would, but then when you build up to your degree show in fourth year, in fourth year you'll be using far more than a hundred pounds worth of stuff. You'll be using so much more. So, um, it's good that it's split out the same price per year, but you'll be using a lot more <laughs> on your way up. So, I think it, yeah, I think it is justified in the end. <laughs> uh, just looking at some of the other questions that we've got here. Um, there's one that I was about to pick up on. Uh, we've got access to the building and um, some of you may have enjoyed late night access in this group here we, when things were normal did we yeah we got I think we were open to nine o'clock and open on Saturdays too I think five was it eight o'clock on a Saturday or did anybody it's been five o'clock we on a Saturday Francis oh there you go five. there you go <laughs> what was it Christine it's normally five on a Saturday. I'd just completely forgotten because we've not had any late opening through COVID. But yeah, definitely the students are trying to keep buildings open um, as much as possible so that students can access um, the studios, their spaces um, and certain areas within the workshops, but not all of them after hours. So um, there's, there's definitely a, a, a uh, a need to keep it open so that students can work at different times because in fact we, we do acknowledge the fact that many of the students are working and um, some of you might be doing hours somewhere else and need to come in a bit later so that's all part of that philosophy. Um, Christine you've been answering lots of questions coming in here and um, some of it's been about photography I don't know. And we've also got um, we've also got on the call Helen Hardman, who is um, one of our key members of staff who helps a lot of um, people from schools put together portfolios. Um, so if anybody has any questions about portfolios, Helen is fantastic and she can sort of come in and answer any questions about that if anybody's got anything specific to answer. Um, have we missed any? I, I can see a question. Sorry, I was actually checking. I can see a question about um, does anyone offer, the, does any of the art and design courses offer placement years? Um, yeah. I felt I could chip in with this a little bit. I'm planned yeah. to go abroad as of does it, January next semester. I'm planning to go to Michigan to Alma College to go abroad and study for six months. So yes, they offer abroad exchange years, like all the courses, which I would really highly encourage people to get involved in because it's a good opportunity to take up and stuff. So yeah, I'd answer that one while I saw it. Thanks, Lucas, and thanks for spotting that. We have a go abroad team in the university um, and it is very much encouraged for students to um, go abroad and study. We do still have Erasmus running, but I think Erasmus is a European exchange programme. I think it's running this year and next year, and I think there's currently looking into what could perhaps replace Erasmus. So we're hoping that we don't lose that completely. But um, students come in to the college from other countries and we encourage our students to go out. So definitely getting that experience of working and studying in another country is fantastic. And well done, uh, Lucas, for getting a place in Michigan. Yay! Uh, any other questions that I have missed? We might be getting close to the end of this session, I think. We're due to stop at, is it six o'clock or ten to? Somebody remind me of that. Ten, ten to six, Francis. So we have come to the end. Well, um, 
I'd just like to say once again, thanks very much to all our students who are here and to everyone who's tuned in to ask questions uh, and to listen to the talks. We hope you found it really helpful. Um, please do send us messages, get in touch. If you've got anything you'd like to ask further, um, we're happy to keep answering and we are online until seven this evening. So you're very welcome to join us again in the next session, which I think starts at six o'clock. Thank you all. Bye bye.